worship you, oh God. We praise you, Lord God. We love you, Lord. That's why we live. That's why we live. That's why we live. We live just to worship you and recognize that in you we live and move and have our being. There is no other way. There is no other God. You are who you say you are. And we are so codependent on you. We worship you now. And we honor you. And we glorify you. And we thank you that you've got something on your mind today. Download that information into our memory banks. Download, oh God, all that we need today. We declare it. We decree it, God. We establish this is a new day for us. Yeah. Our backs are to the past. Our eyes are fixed on you. You know exactly what we need. And today, oh God, we thank you.1 Samuel chapter number 16 and verse number 5. And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Come with me to the sacrifice. 
Everybody say, come with me to the sacrifice. I want to speak about this morning on simply God is taking us to a new level. Everybody say God is taking us to a new level. You may be seated. God arrested me for three hours last night. I came down here with a word that I thought that God wanted me to deliver today. And as I sat in my hotel room before God Almighty for three hours, I've never had this happen in all the years I've been preaching in the manner that it happened to me yesterday. So God knew who was going to be here. And God, I'm telling you, God has a direct word for your life. And God began to show me about this new level, a new dimension, a new place. God told Samuel to go to the house of Jesse. And he said, I want you to anoint me out of one of Jesse's sons. I want you to anoint him to a new level, to walk and to be a king. Samuel said to God, hold on, I can't do this. And he began to conversate with God and he said, God, if I go anoint a new king, Saul will kill me. And so God said, Samuel, this is what I want you to do. So God speaks to Samuel and says, you go to the house of Jesse and there you anoint this son. And, and, and he, no, no, God, I can't do that. Saul will kill me. And God said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I'm going to use it. He didn't use this word, but I'm going to use it. God says, I want you to use subterfuge. Now, what subterfuge means is that it appears one way when really it's not the way that it appears. And so God says, I want you to go and I want you to tell Jesse to come with me to the sacrifice. And I want you to go and I want you to make it look like, oh, hallelujah. I want you to make it look like that you're just coming to sacrifice and tell all of his sons to come with you to the sacrifice and what they think is going to be a sacrificial thing, that isn't anything but just a sham. Really what's happening is I'm getting you to a son that's going to move to a new level. Now I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say this right now and you listen to me. Sometimes we go to the sacrifice and we think it's about a slaying, a killing, a sacrifice. But in reality... That's only just <laughs> subterfuge. God may make it look one way, but the truth of the matter is he's coming to get you to a new level. And so when you come to what you think is the slaying and the sacrifice, that's not what it's all about at all. It's about everybody say a new level. Come on, about two-thirds of you said it. Everybody say a new level. Come on, say a new level. So David comes and David starts bringing all his good-looking sons in there. He brought Elab in there. He brought Abinadab in there. He had all these good-looking sons lined up. And as they're standing there, he's waiting for him to anoint one of them. And he looks and says, that's not the man. 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 And all of a sudden, he went through all of his boys. And then Samuel said, do you have any more? Oh, well, I've got one on the back side of the desert, and he's not very comely. He doesn't look very good. He's ruddy. He's redheaded. He's freckle-faced. 
And the Bible said that they went and they brought David. And he anointed David. Now let me tell you something. David was on the backside of the desert. David was being faithful. He had killed a lion nobody had seen. He had killed a bear that nobody had seen. He was simply in a place of being faithful. I'm telling you today that God is going to take this church and this ministry to another level. And I'm telling you, you may not be known like you should be known as of yet. You're sitting on the side of this road in a nice place, but you've been killing your bears and you've been killing your lions. Nobody knows the sacrifice of what you've been through, but you have done it with integrity and you have done it with commitment unto Christ. I'm telling you something, and David went before Samuel, and Samuel took the oil, and he anointed him. Now, let me tell you something. He needed the anointing of Samuel in front of his family to establish him as king to his family. But when it come time for him to be established as king in a nation, it took a problem to show up. Oh, I want to say that again. He needed a prophet to establish him the eyes of his family. But he needed a problem to establish him in the eyes of a nation. I'm telling you right now, God said, okay, it's time, David. And so I'm going to bring a, a Goliath into your life. And when he had to face his Goliath, that's when God moved him to another level. That's when they begin to say, Saul hath slain his thousands, but David hath slain his ten thousands. Are you listening to me today? I'm telling you right now, you think that the thing that has come against Against you in this church and you think the things that have come against you in your life come to destroy you I've come to tell you God will take the thing that came to destroy you God will sanctify it touch it turn it around and make it serve you oh come on somebody needs to put your hands together and start shouting unto God <laughs> now let me tell you something we hear about moves of God Moves, moves of God, but a move of God is strapped to a time and a place and a season. Amen. I want to say that again. A move of God is relegated to a time, a place, and a season. But when you talk about a new level, <laughs> you're talking about a new way of life. You're talking about a new way of maneuvering. You're talking about a whole new level. Everybody say a new level. You see, the Bible said when the children of Israel was going through the wilderness, each man was given an almer. An almer is a pint. A pint is equal to a pound. There was two million people. They were given about six pints or six pounds a day. Divide that. That's 12 million pounds of manna. Every day that God bestowed upon Israel. But they had to wait upon on that manna. Then the Bible said when they got ready to move that they would move by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. They could not move till the cloud moved. They could not move until the fire moved because they were moving by a move of God. But God said, Israel, I'm about to let you step into another level. I'm about to let you get into a place that no longer are you going to have to wait every morning for the manna. No longer are you going to have to wait for the cloud and no longer are you going to have to wait for the for the fire by night but God said I'm about to step you into the land of Canaan I'm about to put you into the land oh come on somebody I'm about to put you there and let you drink from wells that you didn't dig I'm going to let you eat from trees that you didn't even plant why because it's a new level everybody say a new level 
But when they stepped into Canaan land, the Bible said the giants met them there. And I'm telling you, the Bible said they had to slay the giants. Come on. Everybody say slay the giants. Don't get upset when a giant steps up in your way because your giant is your key. Don't get upset when trouble shows up because that is a sign that you're about to step into your promised land, that you're about to step into your next level. Somebody said, I got this face in me. You ought to get ready, get ready, get ready because God is about to allow you to step into Mm, I feel it coming on now. I know it's popular to say. I know it's popular to say a new level, a new devil. But I got to tell you something today. I've come to tell you today a new appointment, a new anointment. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody say trouble is going to get me to my next level. I read something in the paper last week that was very, very, uh, I mean, it just, yeah, have you ever read something, just something leaped in your spirit? How many knows where South Bend, Indiana is? In South Bend, Indiana, there was a large computer company. Listen closely, this is important. There was a large computer company in South Bend, Indiana that, that caught on fire. And all of the fire departments of South Bend gathered there to put this fire out. It was a huge manufacturer of, of computers. And the fire started from the inside. They had every fire department in South Bend, Indiana out there. And they summoned for more help. There was a little, little volunteer fire department from Elkhart, Indiana. Eight men got on the fire truck and they drove to the fire. When they got there, all those big fire trucks with their tall ladders shooting that flame on the outside, but the fire was on the inside. That little truck come flying past all of those big fire engines with all their nice equipment, drove right through the front door of that computer warehouse knocked the doors down. I mean, it just drove up into the building and they put the fire out on the inside. Everybody else was trying to fight it from the outside, but those little volunteer fire department from Elkhart, Indiana, busted through the doors of that warehouse and put that fire out. After they got through, the next week, the owner of the company decided he was gonna bless them and he was for, for going and, and being brave and doing that. And so they lined up the eight men and he gave every one of them checks. And then he gave them a check for their volunteer fire department. And then he asked the question, what are y'all gonna do with this money? And the first man looked at him and said, well, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the brain fixed on that fire truck that caused us to run into that building. Now, oh Lord. Now let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Sometimes you will find yourself in situations that you didn't ask to be in. And you'll find yourself in the midst of a burning situation that you didn't plan on getting in there. But what I want to ask you, what are you going to do when you find yourself there? What are you going to do when you find yourself in a mess that you didn't ask to be in? Are you going to give up, give out, and turn around? Are you going to grab the hose and go to work and say, God is is able to turn this situation around. Yes. Yes. My, 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 my. I'm asking you, what are you going to do when you get there? You didn't ask to get there, but you found yourself there. But I've come to tell you, it's going to get you to the next level. I didn't know I was going to end up in jail at midnight. 
I did not know that we were going to find ourselves here. But since we found ourselves here, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do, Silas. We're going to give God the praise. We're going to give God the glory. We're going to worship God. We're going to praise God. I didn't come to Fort Myers to play around. I come down here to preach you into another level. I've come to tell you that God wants to take your mess and make a message out of it. God wants to take your situation and bring you to the next level. How many is ready to go to the next level? How many is ready to say, God? I, I didn't decide when I come in here, I was going to just teach the first service. Mm, glory. But y'all got too much pep around here for me to try to sit up here and talk. Listen. Uh, I, I know, listen, I know white folk and I'm white on the outside, but I'm black on the inside. That's what Miss Vicki Winans told me. She said, Timmy, she said, you double dip, baby. She said, you may look it on the outside, but on the outside, you got the soul inside of you. I've come to Fort Myers to tell you there's a new level in this house. I've come to Fort Myers to tell you I don't know how you got in the situation. I don't know if your brakes ran out on you. I don't know if somebody else pushed you. I don't know how you got there. I don't know if somebody said I'll be with you and then when you got in the battle they jump shipped. I don't know. All I've come to tell you today is God allowed you to get in that situation and God allowed you to get into that circle circumstance so God can break you out of the level you're in and God can break you to the next level. Hey! I can see Paul and Silas. They wound up in that jail. Uh-huh. Here we go. And they're in there. Silas is sitting there and Paul's right beside him. And he said, Paul, I don't know how we got here. Silas, I don't know how we got in this situation, but here we are. So what are we gonna do? Can you sing? Yes. Can you sing? A little bit. A little bit. All right, you sing on a hill far away, and you sing so low we can't hear you. No, I'm kidding. And so they was in that cell, and the Bible said they began to sing praises to God in the midnight hour. How many knows what the midnight hour is? The midnight hours mean you're halfway. You're right in the middle. Some of you are right in the middle of your mess. You're right in the middle of your situation. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to put your head on your chest and cry? Are you going to say, I don't know how I'm going to make it? Are you going to praise your way through and worship your way through and allow God to get you to that next level? And as they began to sing, I don't know what they sang. Well, the devil don't want no singing going on here. Well, the devil don't want no singing going, going on, on here. here. But we don't care what the devil don't like. We're going to sing with all of our might. And all of a sudden, they heard a banging on the door. And so they wrote another verse. Well, the Romans don't want no singing going on here. But they did not care. They found themselves in their mess. And they began to sing. And God said, Gabriel, you go grab that corner. He said, mm -hmm. he said Michael, you go grab that corner. I got news for y'all in Fort Myers, Florida. Elvis Presley didn't sing the first jailhouse rock. Paul and Silas sang the first jailhouse rock rock and as they began to sing God began to rock that jail and the Bible said their chains fell off of them and they walked out of that place my God I feel an anointing I've come to tell you today that if you get a praise in your heart you get a praise in your mouth the chains are going to fall off of your life the chains are going to fall off of your life watch this Lord have mercy. I need, a, I need a big man in here. I need somebody that works out a little bit. Hey Amen. Where's he at? Come here, brother. Watch this. Here's how this thing works. Come on, about this new level. Walk up here. God says, now here's what's going to happen. And so just sit down right there. I'll use you in just a second. God says, this is what I'm going to do. I've got this for you, and I'm going to give it to you. Come here, you stand right here, all right? And then, 
He holds it up and says, now, I want you to get what I'm, what I'm going to give you. I want to get you to the next level. And I got something for you. Now, what I want you to do is I want you, here we go. I want you to stop him from getting this, okay? God says this is for you. You reach for it. But push him back. But trouble shows up. And you're trying to get to this next level. And you're trying to get what God's got for you. But everybody say trouble is stopping me from getting to my next level. Stay right there because I'm not through. You see, Pastor Lynn, you know God's got another level for you, right? I mean, God's got something so great in your life. It may even be a man. I don't know, but I'm telling you, God has got something great in your life. Come on, y'all. Let's have some fun here. But I never thought I'd see her face turn red, but it just turned red. God has many new levels for her. I said many new levels for her. You, you, I have not seen. I used to think that was my eye, but God said I, just general, I have not seen. This area has not seen what God's about to do through this woman. This area has not even heard. We thought that was to us, but that's not to us. That's to everybody. I have not seen and here, oh Lord, have mercy. I'm about to get you to another level. I'm about to get you to another place. And every time that you thought you were going to get to that next level, trouble showed up. Come on. You start a move of God, trouble's going to show up. You start believing God's going to get you totally out of debt, trouble's going to show up. Come on now. And so God says, all right. Here it is. You want it? How many can see what I'm talking about? You know there's another level. And you want to get to that next level. But trouble stops you. Oh, hallelujah. But God said, here's what I want you to tell the folk tomorrow. David said, made my enemy get on your hands and knees get on your hands and knees take your shoes off brother the bible said that he has made your enemy your footstool stand up on his back now now what was stopping you from getting to your next level now you're going to be able to get to your next level because trouble is going to be the footstool that you're going to stand upon to get you to your next level 